And that is what our scripture reading is for today. Our scripture reading, this is the reading that we have been focusing on uh, this weekend in our regional assembly. And it is a call to mighty and important work. And the scripture reads in 2 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 5, verses 17 through 21. And the scripture reads, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And God had his reading, or his blessing, the reading of this word. Now again, I'm proud of the Reverend Cooper. He's here to bring us now our, uh, our message. message 
bearers. We walked away with some core values to consider, some goals and strategies. It was a full weekend, y'all, as we consider a way forward for the three of us. The experiences, the teaching, the learning, the fellowship, it requires us to grapple with how we engage the world back home. Because it's time to go. We believe that the church is entrusted with the message of reconciliation. That God trusts us enough to give us the message that is needed for a region of the world that is in need of something different. And all this is from God, it's not from us. Not based on our human understanding, persuasion, or grandeur. God saw fit to reconcile us. Back to God's self through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We believe that reconciliation has the ability to transform us. Because God makes the appeal through us. Paul says something new can come from something old. As new creations, we envision the call to new life that can come out of old situations, new life uh, out of old habits and traditions. The old can be transformed into something new. And life can be made new again. Because we believe that Christ died and we were resurrected with him into new life. All things are new because God reconciled us, y'all. But what does it really mean? So what? My pastor, Frank Thomas, always shared that there are some experiences that requires a response. This weekend requires a response, y'all. When you go back home, you will be required to give a response. And so my challenge and charge to you is that you answer the so what well. What difference does it make? Because our faith requires us to answer the question. Come on, somebody. The dilemma of our churches require that we answer the question in the affirmative. Hope for our children require that we answer the question in the affirmative. I challenge us as we leave to answer our so what? What difference does it make in the affirmative? If we leave here and answer our so what in the negative, nothing that is said here this weekend will make a difference. We'll be like the farmer who sows the word and some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. And because the soil was shallow, the word sprang up and withered because it did not have enough soil. Y'all, we've had plenty of soil this weekend. And some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. However, if we, if we leave this weekend with a so what in the affirmative that it does make a difference because some seed fell on some good grounds. Some 100, some 30, some 60. I can tell you what the difference should be and could be. But only you as individual pastors, lay folk, leaders, volunteers, you have to answer your own question. So what? What difference does it make? But I'll give you my answer as we prepare to leave this place. I run up and down the highways between Arkansas, Mississippi, and Louisiana meeting with church leaders, clergy groups, search teams, preaching in pulpits. I run from place to place, working with us, pushing and prodding us to consider the ways 
to be more effective in our witness to our church communities. I suggest resources, habits, spiritual practices that we could use to sustain us, to push us, to give us a deeper meaning and discovery for where and who we are. Sometimes in congregations, y'all, I tip in and sit in the back, barely being noticed. It's intentional to see, to feel the spirit, to worship and try to get a word for my own soul's healing. There are many days when I'm so tired, my eyes are crossed, but I keep pushing because I believe that there is something relevant in our church that the world needs. Something relevant that we can proclaim to bear up the message of Jesus Christ for strength for transformation, for hope. I pray for wholeness and unity in the body of Christ. I pray that we will somehow love each other and model that love for others, for I believe in the power of love. And so we can't quit because someone is greedy. Come on, somebody. We won't quit because someone is afraid. We won't quit because we fail to recognize ourselves in God's vast creation. We won't quit because the world is full of hate. We keep living this gospel message until it kills us. Because if anyone is in Christ, there's a new creation. Old things pass away, bringing the new into dead situations. At the last regional assembly, and this has stuck with me for two years, David, Pastor Orlando Richmond shared his soul mantra based on John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but shall have everlasting life. And he said, I want to share, share this with you. He said, because before Jesus came into my life, I was so cold, so hateful, so unforgiving, so uncaring, so manipulative, so unforgiving, so unloving. And for me, I was so passive, <laughs> so blind, so close-minded and so naive. But since Jesus came into my life, for God so loved the world, now I'm so loving, <laughs> I'm so kind, I'm so forgiving. You have to be in these situations. <laughs> I'm so concerned about others. I'm so attentive to the needs of God's people. I'm so upset about the way our brothers and sisters are being treated. I'm so confident that we can bear the message of Jesus Christ. So what? This is the difference that it makes for me. It makes a world of difference. It makes a world of difference. My Aunt Sela, my mother's sister, she died maybe 25 years ago. She used to sing at Mount Pisgah Missionary Baptist Church. And she used to sing until her facial expressions were just ugly, y'all. <laughs> she would lose herself in this particular song. And my brothers and sisters used to tease me and say, you look like Aunt Sela. <laughs> and I would cry and say, no, I don't. But I really did. But she would sing. What a wonderful change has been wrought in my life since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy o'er my soul, like sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my life. And church, that's the difference for me. And so I charge you to respond to this question in your own prayer time when you reflect on this weekend. 
to see that our so what can make a difference in the world. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us pray. God, we thank you for who you are in our lives. We thank you for your word that gives us life, hope, and everything that we need. We thank you that we can answer our so what, what difference does all of this make in the affirmative? To say yes to your will, and yes to your way, and yes to be message bearers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.